Hi there, tubers, tubets, various crazy people. Um, it's December 13th, so it's to me it's almost the end of the month. Christmas is right around the corner, and thank God 2020 is almost over. I think all of us are anxious to put this year in our rearview mirror <laughs> and are all looking forward to at least maybe the middle of 2021. We'll see what happens, though, right? Um, anyway, when things come to an end, my mind sometimes goes back to how did they begin? Uh, so how did the month begin? How did it end? How did the year begin? How did it end? And um, I think a lot of that is from when I worked, I worked by the day, I worked by the month, I worked by the year, and it was real deadline heavy and time management heavy. And even though when I, I, I left America three and a half years ago to come out here to the Philippines, I was able to drop a lot of heavy duty baggage not, I don't mean baggage on the conveyor belt. I mean emotional and mental baggage. And leave it successfully in America. Thoughts about suicide, depression, um, shame, anger, regret. Um, I made a conscious decision just to leave that. I can't change it. I can't fix it. Um, but I this is my opportunity to start all over. This is my second chance. And do I want to bring that stuff with me? No. Um, what has that got to do with looking back? Uh, looking back, I, I realized that I didn't leave all my psycho <laughs> thoughts in America. I left some big ones, and I'm happy about that. But a couple of them I dragged a drug with me. And one of them was this crazy mode of always being in a hurry. And hurry up mode, hurry up and get it done, hurry up and wait kind of stuff. And when I got over here, I found myself rushing when I didn't need to. So if I could go back in time and change what I know now to that period of my time, or of my life rather, three and a half years ago, I would have done two words, slowed down. I would have taken my time. I would not have rushed into some of the things that I've rushed into. I rushed into an apartment too quickly. Um, I rushed into a relationship too quickly. Um, the list goes on and on. One day I will make a video that'll last probably three hours and I'll just recant every mistake I ever made in all this gory details. <laughs> but right now, we'll keep it short, we'll keep it simple, hopefully. Sorry for the light changing, but I'm outside. Anyway, slow down. I was in massive hurry up mode and it was brought to my attention the first week that I was here I went to a place called Bo's Coffee at Robinson's Mall, which unfortunately no longer exists. That establishment went out of business because of COVID. But anyway, I went in there uh, during my first week. I ordered my coffee, and instead of just ordering a coffee and then going and sitting down and waiting for it to get done, I actually stood at the counter and, and was like sort of like mentally supervising the guy making it. And I can't swear to this, but I may have been tapping my fingers on the counter and kind of like, you know, making sure that it was mine and he was getting it done and that was going over there. And the, the young lady behind the counter looked at me and I'll never forget this. And she said, sir, are you in a big hurry? And it hit me like a lightning bolt when she said that. And I thought to myself, no. And I looked at her and I said, you know what? I'm not. I am sorry. And she said, that's okay. You know, just she's fine. But she was actually curious. Did I need that coffee right away? Because <laughs> I must apparently, I looked like I did. 
So I went, I sat down, I relaxed, I got the coffee, I took it outside, and I've, I've never forgotten that little girl looking at me saying, sir, are you in a big hurry? So the hurry up attitude of, I need to go here, I need to see this, I need to eat here, I need to experience that, I need to find this waterfall, I need to find this landmark, I need to go to this restaurant, all this stuff that I'd seen on YouTube and watched and couldn't wait to get to, um, probably took me about a year to kind of get out of that mode. So that would be, if I could, go back in time. Um, I would never dare change an event or a moment or a day itself. But if I could change the attitude that I left at the airport, I would have included the hurry up attitude with it, along with the guilt and the shame and the anger stuff. And it was also brought to my attention one time when I was looking for the entrance to a place that takes you to Apple Island. And I was with a young lady and we were driving around and we, for the love of God, we could not find the road that took you to the Apple Island ferry boat. We were going to take a day trip that day. We drove up and down, we asked people, everybody just kept pointing and sending us this way and sending us that way. And finally, after about two hours, we just gave up. And I was sitting there all crapped out. And the young lady very calmly looked at me and she said, you know what, Paul, Apple Island's not going anywhere. And you're not going anywhere. And that hit me like a ton of bricks. I said, you're right. Um, many times that I've gone looking for one thing, I've gotten lost. <laughs> and uh, ended up finding something totally different but totally cool. So slow it down. I also brought a healthy case of paranoia with me. I was going to a new country, I was going to a new place, I didn't know anybody, and people had warned me over and over and over again to be careful about getting ripped off. So a good deal of, I guess, healthy fear was in me. It's never a good idea to leave cash or anything like that laying out in a hotel room. You don't know what's going to happen. But I kind of took it to another level. <laughs> And that could have been solved if I had taken some advice that I had been given and, and chose not to. Two pieces of advice that I should have taken and didn't. So I'm going to share that with you. And this is not me giving you advice. This is just saying that if I had it back in time, I would have. Um, number one, I would have bought what's called a lock tote bag. And what's that? Well, that's this pretty much bulletproof, cut through proof, steel mesh type of, of travel bag with a big metal cord on it with a lock and a combination that you can secure your valuables to something like a pipe or something to that effect um, in a hotel room. You can leave all your valuables inside of it and unless they've got a blowtorch, there ain't nobody gonna get that bad boy. So I would have purchased one of those. Another thing that um, I deeply, not deeply regret, but I do regret is that I never opened up what's called a Charles Schwab account. And that was just due to laziness. I knew about the Charles Schwab deal. You go down to Charles Schwab, you open up your banking account with them, and um, checking account, savings account, whatever it is, and they give you a debit card, and then whenever you use an ATM out of the country, all of your fees are reimbursed, so there's no charge. And I think that was, I think I avoided doing that because I had just finished setting up my social security check to get deposited directly into the bank that I currently use in the States. 
And I think, I thought, why rock that boat, you know? I'll just keep the money coming in to a place that's secure. And I'll, I, set my, I did set myself up with a couple of different transfer services, one being Zoom that I use. Um, the other one I think is called TransferWise. And I'll just move my money over that way. So it would have been easier if I'd have had that Charles Schwab account. I would have been much, much more relaxed if when I left my apartment or my hotel room, if I'd have had a secure lock tote bag. Right now, the apartment that I have has a safe with a digital code and it's secured inside of a cupboard. So those fears have been belayed, if you will. Um, I can still move over my monthly money. I can put it in the safe and unless somebody's an expert safe cracker and can break into the apartment and can get over the wall and all the other things that are set up, um, I don't have any problem leaving the house and leaving X amount of pesos or dollars at, at, at the apartment. The slow down thing is something that, to be quite honest with you, I'm still working on. I like to be on time. I like to be efficient with my time. But I constantly remind myself whenever I get in hurry up mode that I'm retired. I don't have a deadline. I don't have to make a YouTube video for a certain day. I don't have to uh, meet somebody for any kind of meeting. I don't have a deadline. I don't need to get anything specifically done unless it's just, you know, even the laundry. If it's tomorrow, it's tomorrow. And slowly but surely, I've been letting go of some of that sort of stuff. So if I had slowed down, I would have acclimated, I think, much easier here the first at least year. And the, the frustration levels of not finding things when I'm supposed to, the Apple Island story, um, if I had just taken a more of a come see, come saw kind of attitude, uh, that would have made it a little bit more pleasant. Would I, now, if I could go back in time and change things, would I? Probably not. Um, I would probably change the lock tote and the Charles Schwab, the mechanical parts of the move over here. I would have done that because of their safety and then there's just, just the ease of money. But as far as hurrying up and renting the wrong apartment and hurrying up and getting involved with you know the wrong girl way too soon, I don't think I would have changed that. I think that I would have just left myself stupid to all that and let it happen because that's all part of the experience out here. So none of it, none of it severely changed me. Um, I have a lot of good memories as well as bad from a lot of the mistakes that I've made. Um, again, I could do a two hour video on things that went wrong, things that I did wrong, decisions that were poorly executed, and maybe one day in the future, I will, uh, I will, I will do that. Anyway, um, 2020 is going to be soon in our rearview mirror, and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in the future. All right, I'll talk to you later.